Welcome to the 2022 Economic Depression and Recession Channel. I'm your host, Tony. Thank you for joining me. As we head into a new week here in May, mid-May, things are heating up in this month as the jobs report for April show that we did add about 428,000 jobs. We're also going to be talking about the record rent prices that are going up. It's not just the housing prices that's going up. It's the pressures on the rental markets, too, as many uh, m- younger millennials and other people transition from selling their either condos or houses or moving to states that have favorable, uh, more tax favorable conditions for them. And so we're going to be looking at that briefly today here on the report. Thank you for joining me. Please be sure to subscribe. Please tell your neighbors and friends that this channel preached to me is the 100% uh pure and unadulterated truth for brief financial news in the united states and beyond sometimes i thank you for your support and i read all of your comments and please keep them coming for what you like to see in addition to this channel thank you and let's get right into it guys we have it here employers added according to nbcnews.com Employers added 428,000 jobs in April as unemployment rate remains unchanged. Now, normally, uh, if you remember in the past, the media had been reporting that the unemployment rate was actually decreasing, um, you know, from its thing. But now it's stagnating. That's never a good sign, guys. And so we've had these jobs. But again, we must remain. We must ask ourselves, where are these jobs and what sectors of the economy are these jobs coming from? So we have an unemployment rate that remains flatlined at 3.6 percent. Um, and you can see that hourly, average hourly earnings for workers climbed by 0.03% month on month. That's a slower pace. So workers are flatlining wages. Those who do have jobs, the wages are stagnating, as we can see. Um, I don't think I need you to uh, to reiterate that too much because we've already seen that according to reports. So now, guys, what they're, what they're trying to do is pull down inflation from 8% to 2%. But inflation is continuing to grow like a wildfire, as I've said in previous videos. We're, going up, we're headed toward 10% basically before the end of June here. And so, guys, what they need to do is it's not so much about creating jobs because – Right now, uh, the whole spin has been that employers are having difficulty filling job openings. You know, you see all these signs on the windows at, at all these stores now hiring, all these companies now hiring. But they're really doing is creating a database of resumes and people. And now, as you know, the resumes are not screened by an actual human. You guys know that, right? This is screened by an automated system and um, a resume or a, an AI system that picks out keywords. So. Uh, you could have 100 and 200 resumes, uh, 2,000 resumes, and people are not looking through those. The computer is scanning for keywords and things and through a certain filter criteria. So that's another problem that we're having um, in terms of American jobs and things of that nature. So automation technology is taking over. Robots is coming in, uh, and uh, jobs are not being replaced as fast. So we have these factors, uh, that so-called great resonation, as the media calls it, too low wages, um, and people are avoiding jobs because of the pandemic and everything that's going on or that's on the tail end of this pandemic, endemic, if you want to call it that. But with that being the case, guys, um, job openings increased to 11.5 million in April. That's a new all time high to close out the month of April. Uh, however, people have been deciding that it either it hasn't been worth it to work Um You know, hasn't been the money just hasn't been there when you take out taxes and all that kind of stuff. And so the rest stay at home and just, you know, collect the government check or, um, you know, work from home or get another type of income outside of the one that uh, change careers. I should say Um, a second career is becoming popular, especially with um, older millennials. Uh, They're going back to school, uh, nursing school, law school, medical school, whatever, be engineering, whatever, having going a second career uh, in order order to make men's meet. So with that in mind, uh, housing has become spiked in rents in Tampa Bay and other areas. Okay, remember, people are flocking to these cities because Florida, Illinois, uh, Texas, you know, they have low taxes or no state income taxes, Tennessee, places like that. People are flocking to because these states don't have state income tax or they don't have low to mid, uh, medium, excuse me, property taxes. So people are flocking to these places because they don't want to be taxed to death and trying to get closer to retirement or in retirement, as you can see here. So the average rent for single family homes, small unit buildings increased more than 28 percent year over year. And that's substantial because you have a lot of people moving from these states, like I said, from California and everything, the great exodus from there and other states. And, you know, you end up paying what in California, you end up paying twenty three hundred, twenty four hundred a month for a small one bedroom studio. And that's minimum. They go up to three thousand dollars. And in some of these areas in Orange County and, and SoCal and all that kind of stuff. So, guys, when you can come here, but even in Tampa, the average one bedroom apartment is, 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 is 1500 a month uh, in other cities, too, as well. So you can see the rent prices in Tampa Bay, Florida have blown past market predictions here. The actual rent, 1999, it was projected to be 1708, as you can see, is right now in February 2022. 
uh, and they know that the, uh, these rental places call each other. They call each other. Um, you know, they call each other. Hey, what you're charging for rent? You know, hey, I got demand. The demand because they based on it. Supposedly, the demand is there. So you have people moving out of houses, cashing out the houses, going to either rental because you know. Uh, they, they like the temporary situation or a condo um, because of whatever they have, not because of they're not building equity, but they, they like that situation because they're more of a temporary area, uh, second home, etc. So, guys, this is going to be a crazy across the country. We have the same thing found in Miami, Phoenix, Scottsdale, Arizona, Las Vegas, San Diego and the New York City area. So renters are being hit hard as well as mortgage companies. I mean, mortgage people have been hit hard as well. So you can see Miami had the highest rental change in price. It went up 35 percent year in to year in from December 20th to December 2021. Phoenix, Orlando, Las Vegas, Austin, like I said, all these cities were on here with an increase. D.C. surprisingly had the lowest increase, only 5.3%, but the rents are already super high in these cities along with a housing shortage. And so where are these workers uh, are going to live at? That's the thing. Even if they increase the employment odds, where are these workers are going to live at because we're in a housing crunch, a recession? So it's just a lot of multiple things to look at. Um, and, and what I suggest is a lot of families, and they might have already done this, is live together. I've seen three and four cars, five cars in some of these driveways and some of these subdivisions in, in the Northeast and the Southeast in the Midwest. Um, and people are really like smartening up and realize we can live together, we can save money or even rent out our place on Airbnb and save money that way and make money um, versus everybody trying to buy an individual house um, with these prices just being act astronomical um, in this bubble situation that we're in right now. The bubble is ending, as you know, folks, it's ending very, very soon. This is the last year, full year. And then next year, it, we're going into, we'll be full blown in the recession um, by the summer. And that's when these prices on the housing is going to drop. And then all the, the only market left to fall after that after the housing market will be the credit tightening market and by then who knows what the interest rates will be and everything if there's no black swan that comes in so continue to prepare guys continue to um adjust your budgets accordingly um as you know that things that the federal reserve has indicated they're going to continue tightening uh with money supply and tightening with interest rates so adjust your budgets continue to prepare i'll see you in the next video thank you very much